Vavia should be winning here. His class would just get him over the line. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm previewing Sandown Hillside. This is the fourth meeting in fourth meeting running that they've had at Sandown Hillside on the Wednesday meetings. I think there's a lot of value here and a lot of horses that look decent at decent odds that I think can get up. Let's get into it and let's get some winners. Race one is a maiden played over the 1400 meters. This is the market headed by British Columbia at 380. Glen of Hope at four twenty and Jennifer Eddy at six dollars. I'm with Glen of Hope in the first. I think she's going to train, considering her form is just superior to the rest of the field. Considering that she started in group races, being the Ethereal Group Three and the Kennedy Oaks Group One, she's probably fourteen hundred is probably a bit short, short for her. But her class should just get her over the line here. British Columbia, the obvious danger, is a really really good horse. Um, uh, a second and an eighth placing to start their career. Golden Logie for third and Matsukaz for fourth. But I am with Glint of Hope to win the first at Sandown. Race two is a class one handicap over 1400 metres. This is the market headed by Toby Shaw at 260, Jester at $5, Predetermined at $7 in Belmont Avenue, and Al Burke at $9. I'm with one of the international runners here in race two. I'm with Belmont Avenue. I think $9 is over the odds considering he had decent form overseas and has, is having his first start in Australia. Toby Shaw, the obvious day, did trot it in last start. And then Jester uh, for third. Looks a very progressive animal. And Sebastian the Fox has got good form in a couple of uh, stakes races and $71 and I think is over the odds. But I'm with, like I said, I'm with Belmont Avenue, uh, $10 the win and $2 the place on Sebastian the Fox. Hopefully we get a collect. Race 3 is a benchmark 78 handicap over 3,000 metres. This is the market headed by Convict Sam at $4. Equal favourite with Mr. Blackwood. Then Wellsford at four twenty, and Bud Fox at $6. Race 3, I'm with Bud Fox here. His stats over the 3,000 metres, or at 3,000 metres, are absolutely outstanding. He's a stayer that's... He's an absolute stayer that's confirmed now. Mr. Blackwood for second has been running well. On 3,000 metres, there'll be no issue. I arise in Rider in the Snow. The two roughies in the race that I think can both get placing. But like I said, I'm with Bud Fox here. $7 a win and a dollar the place on I arise and Rider in the Snow. Race 4 is a 3-year-old Phillies benchmark 64 handicap. Over the 1300 metres, this is the market headed by Madame de Gast at 360, Road to Aratiki at 460 and 750 for My Whisper. Race 4, I'm with My Whisper for Jamie Carr and Pete and, Pete and Paul Snowden. Bring the horse down from Sydney because probably of the wet tracks to run here, and I think it's a great chance. 750 is over the odds. Third impulse for second, 950 again, I think is a little bit over the odds. Littlemont and uh, White Wedding are the value in the race, but like I said, my whisper is the one that should be winning race four. Race five is a benchmark 70 handicap over the 1600 meters. This is the market headed by Inverell at 230, Paldora at 480, and Netanyahu at $6. This is the best roughie for the day in race five being upswing. I think he's way over the odds at $21. His last run at the Valley running into third being first up was absolutely outstanding. Billy again rode him that day and he's riding again. I think he's going to trot in here. I think he's a very, very good winning chance. Inverell obviously trotted in last start and can win again. There's no reason why she can't. Just Adrena, Constantinople are both roughies that I'm pretty keen on here. Constantinople will need further and this is probably just to get the cobwebs out to focus on the Warnable Carnival, but I think at $34, he's definitely worth something to play. But I'm with Upswing and Constantinople, $5 each way and $2 the place. Race 6 is a benchmark, 64 handicap over the 1,000 metres. This is the market headed by Sparring at $280, $4 for Midnight Charm and six fifty for more secrets. Race 6 is where my best bet of the day comes up in sparring. He was an absolute marvel on debut, winning by around 6 lengths. And I think he can repeat the dose here and remain undefeated, being 2 from 2. I think he's a great winning chance. 2 is not over the odds. It's his right price. And bar him, 
pick the Rafi that you think can get up for a place. Universal, Lady, Chrome, Angel, and Pals Reward are all chances to get a place here. I'm particularly keen here on Pals, Pals Reward because he's two from two at the distance, and I don't think he, I think he's a pretty good chance here. 151 is definitely over the odds, and he's definitely worth something to place. But sparring should be getting the chocolates here. Thirty dollars win and a dollar the place on Pals Reward. Race 7 is a benchmark, 64 handicap over the 1800 metres. This is the market headed by Estrada at 440, Sansa at $5, and it's me at 750. Race 7, and this is my next best bet of the day, being Santiro. Again, Patrick Payne and Billy Egan here. I'm pretty keen on him here. He's going to get back, but he showed that he's improving. He's an improving horse. And I think he can get back. If they send a gentleman clip up front, which is what Estrada will do, he's going to go to the front. And that's going to play into the hands of Sancero here. And I think he can come storming over the top. Five dollars is, is worth it. Uh, Port Nafian uh, for second is definitely over the odds at $14, considering he is an international having his first start in this draft. Estrada, like I said, will go to the front. has the map advantage of over Centura, but I think Centura is still going to be a better horse. And double chance for fourth being at $12 and is over the odds. But I'm with Santiago at to get the win at $5 and $3 the place at on Port Nafian. Race 8 is a benchmark 70 handicap over the 1600 metres. This is the market headed by New Choice at 420, Rumbled again at 440, and Flanders Rain at $5. Race 8 at Sandown, and I think a horse that's been winning can win again here in Rumbled again. 440 is a good price. I think he's going to win, and we'll be winning at 4 on the trot. Is a very, very good chance. Tatanka for second. $16 is over the yards. Flanders Rain is a winning chance. And I almost put it on top. But I just think Tatanka has a little bit of the class edge on him. And our just here for, th for fourth at $26. Again, another value runner. But $10 the win on Robert again. I should be getting a collect in race eight. Race nine is a benchmark 70 and handicap over the 1400 meters. This is the market headed by the Garden at 240. Rapid Achiever at three seventy and Shotmaker at nine dollars. This is another one of those roughies in race nine. Quality time is a German import for Chris Waller. I think twenty one dollars is over the odds, and I personally think with the money that's going to come for the Garden, uh, you'll get a bigger price. I think is good on good ground, probably untested at the distance, but he's won over fourteen hundred and twenty five hundred, so he's. he's an adaptable horse, rapid achiever for seconds, the obvious winning danger to the to my to quality time. Think and fly for third, and Cafe Tortoni, both roughies that I think can get up here. Cafe Tortoni, particularly another Patty Payne and Billy Egan combination here. But I'm with quality time four dollars the win, six dollars the place, a dollar the place on Think and Fly and Cafe Tortoni, and that should get us a pretty good collect for Sandown on Wednesday. Thank you for watching my Sand and Hillside preview. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you find a winner, and I hope I found you some winners, and you back some winners. Cheers.